You're listening to a mighty fortress. Hello and welcome to a mighty fortress. I am your host, Knight Jake. On today's episode of A Mighty Fortress, we're going to be commemorating the 50 years of union of the Lutheran Church of Australia. Back in 1966, the two synods of Australia, the United Evangelical Church of Australia and the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Australia, finally came together and formed a single synod, the Lutheran Church of Australia. They met together on October 29th, and went through to November 2nd. This was the synodical meeting that actually declared the final amalgamation and union of the two synods. To commemorate this, I've got some audio that I'm going to be playing from one of the very first uh, church services between the two synods. Now, this is not actually the audio from 1966. Instead, I've actually got some audio from 1965. On November 28th, 1965, the two synods met and made the first official steps in their progress towards fellowship. They declared altar pulpit fellowship and they had a service to commemorate this uh, union of altar pulpit fellowship. Now, I've managed to locate this audio, and I'm going to make it available for the listeners. Now, this audio is broken up into two parts, and so I'll be having two episodes available. One today on Saturday, October the 29th, and I'll be having one later on Wednesday, November 2nd. Now, I hope you enjoy these two episodes, and we'll have another episode of A Mighty Fortress next week. Son and of the Holy Ghost.
by the grace of God and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we, the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Australia and the United Evangelical Lutheran Church in Australia, have been led together in the confession and unity of the one faith in our Lord Jesus Christ and of the one doctrine of his holy gospel. We accept this unity as an unmerited gift of our God in sincere repentance for that which lies behind us since our fathers went their divided ways and in humble gratitude for all that God in his mercy has done through each of us in the years since 1846. He has kept us and blessed us and for this we magnify his holy name. We believe that the union of our churches is his holy will for us at this time. Therefore we, the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Australia and the United Evangelical Lutheran Church in Australia have declared our acceptance of a document of union and have given each other the solemn pledge to unite for the joint proclamation of the gospel and the common administration of the sacraments. Whereas the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Australia declared its acceptance of the document of union in synodical assembly on the 15th day of March at Toowoomba, Queensland, I, as the President, publicly proclaim in the name of this church that altar and pulpit fellowship is hereby established with the United Evangelical Lutheran Church in Australia. And I call upon all pastors and members of our church to practice such fellowship in the spirit of true brotherly love as the expression of our common faith and confession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Whereas the United Evangelical Lutheran Church in Australia declared its acceptance of the document of union in synodical assembly on the 22nd day of October at Horsham, Victoria, I, as the President, publicly proclaim in the name of this church that altar and pulpit fellowship is hereby established with the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Australia, and I call upon all pastors and members of our church to practice such fellowship in the spirit of true brotherly love as the expression of our common faith and confession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Blessed art thou, O Lord, the God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heavens and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from thee, and thou rulest over all. In thy hand are power and might, and in thy hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. And now we thank thee, our God, and praise thy glorious name.
we have thought of thy loving kindness, O God, in the midst of thy temple. According to thy name, O God, so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. on and eternal God, thou King of glory and Lord of heaven and earth, through whose spirit all things are governed and through whose providence all things are ordered, who art the God of peace and the author of all true unity, we beseech thee, forgive us our sins and pour upon us the grace of unity 
that all schisms being healed, we may at all times serve thee in true fear to the praise and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. The epistle is written in the fourth chapter of the epistle of St. Paul to the Ephesians, beginning at the first verse. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all loneliness and meekness, with patience, forbearing one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is above all and through all and in all. Here ends the epistle. gospel is written in the 17th chapter of the gospel according to St. John beginning at the 17th verse. <laughs> Sanctify them in the truth, thy word is truth. As thou didst send me into the world, so have I sent them into the world. And for their sake I consecrate myself, that they also may be consecrated in truth. I do not pray for these only, but also for those who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, even as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. The glory which thou hast given me I have given to them, that they may be one even as we are one, I in them and thou in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them even as thou hast loved me. Here ends the Gospel. Amen.